Good morning, Escayana. I'm Jamie Morris. And I'm Cortense Carti. And it's Thursday it's already. Nice. The weekend is almost here. And I am so excited for the weekend. For those of you who have one more day to work, look forward to it. We'll help, we're, we will help you. <laughs> I am still stuck on Wednesday in Wiscomus. My tongue is getting tight. But we will help you get through the day. Indeed, indeed. We begin now uh, with our first local story. This is by way of the Inland Revenue Department press release. The Inland Revenue Department, the IRD, is pleased to announce that the 26th and 27th August 2022 are prescribed dates for the discounted VAT rate days. This will allow all approved VAT registered businesses to charge VAT at the rate of 5% on the sale of goods only. All tangible items that are currently subject to 17% VAT will qualify for the discount on discounted VAT rate day. Items eligible must also be available for sale and immediate issuance or delivery to the customer on discounted VAT rate days. Businesses desirous of registering for discounted VAT rate day must ensure that all VAT return filings and or payments are up to date. They have no outstanding taxes, license, penalties, and or interest due to the Inland Revenue Department and the Customs and Excise Department. Business wishing to participate may collect application forms from the Inland Revenue Department main office on Bay Road and the Charleston office. Forms must be returned on or before August 25th, 2022 at 3 p.m. Businesses are encouraged to submit their applications via email at inlandrevenue at idr.gov.kn. Interesting stuff. Yeah. So we should take opportunity. Absolutely. Of consumers that day for those consumers will benefit. Stuff. Yes. Yeah. Indeed. All right. Moving on. Sir Simeon Daniel Foundation donates to 30 students. This from SK and Vibes. 30 students from, the Barnes, from Barnes Scott were the recipients of an EC $15,000 donation from the Sir Simeon Daniel Foundation at a ceremony held at the Sir Simeon Daniel Museum on August 22nd. It was the first time that the annual event was held at the Sir Simeon Daniel Museum, which was financed by the, Simeon Daniel, the Sir Simeon Daniel Foundation, rather, constructed by Dion Daniel and Associates. This year marks the 10th anniversary of Sir Simeon's passing and also the 10th year since he was named a national hero. Additionally, 2022 marks the 10th anniversary of the event, which is normally celebrated on National Heroes Day on the open playfield in Barnscott. Though the Twin Island Federation was adversely impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020 and 2021, the foundation maintained its annual donation to the students in Barnscott. The event is recognized by the foundation to celebrate the former premier's birth anniversary of August 22nd, the premier being dubbed the founding father of modern Nevis. Oh, that's so so this sweet. is great indeed that they're able to continue mm -hmm. to make donations. Lovely. New administration to renovate and reconstruct original Baxter High School. This from uh, with Media. The new government of St. Kitts and Nevis has entered its third week in uh, the office and has already made some decisive changes along with the decision to remove all COVID-19 health and travel protocols. The new administration committed to its campaign promise, promise to renovate the Bastyr High School on the original historic site. In June, former Prime Minister Dr. Timothy Harris shared that construction of a new Bastyr High School would commence at Ponds Extension in East Bastyr. In 2012, the Bastyr High School was forcibly shut down following contamination concerns. The decision to build the school in East Bastyr opposite the Royal Bastyr Valley National Nature Reserve received much pushback from the community. It became a campaign issue for the St. Kitts Nevis Labour Party. According to the post cabinet briefing for the meeting of the cabinet minister on August 22nd, several other submissions were approved, including a travel allowance for all early childhood resource teachers and the exemption of tuition costs for students attending the Clarence Fitzroy Bryan College, the CFBC, starting from the academic year 2022-2023 and going forward, both of which were included in remarks by, Minister, 
by Prime Minister, the Honorable Dr. Terence Jew, during his speech on August 13th at the swearing in ceremony. So they're working already. Yes. Two weeks in. Not well, they have to. Yet. It's their mandate, so they're yeah. doing that. I, I particularly like the introduction of the travel allowance for yes. resource teachers because obviously they have to make their way around. Other people in education do receive a traveling allowance anyway, so this is a good initiative. All right, moving on to a check of our local weather. It's going to be partly cloudy with a 50% or moderate chance of showers, a high of 91 degrees and a low of 73 degrees Fahrenheit. And currently, the temperature is 83 degrees. And take a look at the weekly forecast as we go to a break. See you on the other side. Dreamy Decor specializes in flowers for all events, from birthdays to weddings and any other special occasion. What's a better way to express to the people you love than by providing the finest selection of beautiful flowers and gifts? So when you think of flowers, think of us, Dreamy Decor. celebrate bigly by bringing back the seven week challenge for week one we will focus on the importance of breastfeeding in week two we will participate in the eska and mo anniversary walk week three let's watch the in your kitchen i rep my community competition finals week four a healthy drinking water challenge during week five, it's all about mindfulness and our mental health. And no, that's not all. In week six, we will learn about self-care and management. The celebrations end in week seven with the Caribbean Wellness Week activities, National Fruit Day and National Sneaker Day. Come participate, celebrate and enjoy. Join Eske and Moves and let us move toward a healthier St. Kitts and Nevis. Welcome back to Good Morning SKN. We continue now with the latest in regional news. This from CMC. The Barbados Royals, Guyana Amazon Warriors, and Trinobago Knight Riders, TKR, went into the women's Sky X60 yesterday with balanced teams featuring international stars they hope will help them win the inaugural tournament. The seven matches in the fast-paced 60-ball contest will all be played here at Warner Park with the final set for August 28th. Stephanie Taylor will lead an Amazon Warrior squad that includes Sri Lanka woman captain Shamari Adipatu, who has made six international hundreds with an ODI high score of 178, South African seam bowler Ayabunga Kaka, and 16-year-old Isani Vagela, who has represented the U.S. national team. The former West Indies women captain said the team was looking forward to benefiting from the skill and experience of Adipatu, who has played in almost 200 internationals, and Kaka, who has a T20 international bowling average of 24.02 and an economy rate of 6.43. Anissa Muhammad, TKR's vice captain, like Taylor, believes her team has a good mix. She said, quote, We have power hitters, 
We have good bowlers on our team, and we have a lot of players with a lot of experience under their belt. So we're really hoping that will be enough to help us get over the line in this tournament. End quote. And she says that with so much excitement and enthusiasm, I know that the fans can't wait to see. You said it all. You said it all indeed. I, don't, I wonder if I'm going. Oh, Maybe you, I will. You're Maybe a cricket fan. Yeah. Okay. Well, I grew to become one. because I never liked the sport. I was more of a golf girl, believe it or not. Golf girl? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You should not have told me that. But anyway, <laughs> all right. <laughs> On the international scene, this from CNN, Maxwell Frost, a 25-year-old community organizer, will win the Democratic nomination in Florida's 10th Congressional District CNN uh, project and could be Come the first member of a Generation Z elected to Congress. He bested a crowd feel of candidates looking to replace Democratic Rep. Val Demins in an Orlando-based district, including State Senator Randolph Racy, former U.S. Rep Corinne Brown, who recently settled a federal corruption case after winning a new trial and serving more than two years in prison, and a former U.S. Rep Alan Grayson. Demons is vacating the seat for a Senate run, and she clinched the Democratic nomination Tuesday to face GOP Senator Marco Rubio in November. Frost victory Tuesday makes him the favorite in November for the deep blue seat that Joe Biden would have carried by 32 points in 2020. Ahead of the primary, Frost, a gun violence prevention activist who this summer disrupted conservative Talk show host Dave Rubin's public interview with Republican Gov. Ron DeSantis with calls to end gun violence a generation generated considerable buzz. Frost was endorsed by notable progressives such as Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders and Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren, as well as the Congressional Progressive Caucus, PAC or PAC, and he had raised one point five million through August 3rd, more than any other candidate in the field according to Federal Election Commission filings. Hmm. Young and on the up and up. So it seems good, Hansen. I know. Look so at that. At 25, good. already in politics? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If he's successful, he'll have a lucrative career and a long career out of him. Like, so great thing. like Mr. Biden. Because Mr. Biden has been in politics forever now. Yeah, yeah, you, you're following Mr. Biden. That's yeah. great. I don't want to age him, but we know we know when to get to that age. Yes, indeed. So I, think, I think President Obama was one of the younger ones. Yes, indeed. Yes, right. yes, yes. Well, there you have it for the regional and international news. Stay tuned. Much more on Good Morning SKN after this. I eat some veggies for dinner. Let me just check the amount of sodium in this can. Oh no, this is too much. Let me try our next option. They did say it's healthy to consume less salt. This is much better. I am salt smart. Ever hear Earthquake call and say, Hello, Miss Lee. Yes, it's me, Earthquake. I come in Tuesday around 10. No, sir. Earthquake does arrive unannounced. And when it comes, it shake all sense and sensibility out of we. Remain calm, stay inside, and do the DCH. Drop, cover, hold on. Once the shaking starts, you know it's Earthquake. Make a quick move to a safe place. Don't go to the door. We are in the exit. Stairs might broke up or full of people. Elevator, avoid that because you might get in and poof, power gone, and you're stuck in that box without ear. Take cover under a strong table or a bed or crouch against an inside wall or in a corner and cover your face and your head with your arms. Remember, DCH, drop, cover, hold on. Glass windows and doors, outside walls and doors in an earthquake, bad news. Take for yourself. Most injuries during earthquakes happen when something drop and hit people entering or exiting a building. Last thing, nobody run outside and ask, you feel it, you feel it? Remain calm, stay indoors until all the shaking stop and do the DCH. Drop, cover, hold on.
Where are you going? I just mopped the floor and now the chair leaving marks all over the place. <laughs> Come on, go in bed, see? <laughs> Sometimes I just can't take you on. Violence is expressed in many ways. Most, unfortunately, go unreported or unaddressed for many reasons. If you or someone disabled is being abused, contact the police at 465-2241, social services at 467-1314, or the St. Kitts Nevis Association of Disabled Persons at 465-2151-663-9077 or 663-4116. This message was brought to you by the Department of Gender Affairs in collaboration with the Pan-American Health Organization, PAHO. No cash, no card, no problem. Dad, embrace the freedom. The game of cricket is evolving. When our great-grandparents first came to know the game, it was referred to as a gentleman's sport and featured the longer test matches of two teams of 11 players each who played a four-innings match. These matches could last up to five days or more. Then came the faster-paced 2020 matches that were introduced by Alan Stanford in 2006. The Caribbean Premier League, CPL, was founded by Cricket West Indies in 2013 to replace the Caribbean 2020. In 2015, the St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots cricket franchise burst onto the scene and won the competition for the first time last year. And now this year, we have the introduction of Sky 60 matches. Today we are honored to have with us one of the co-founders of the Hero Caribbean Premier League, who is presently the CEO, Pete Russell. He can tell us about the evolution of the game and explain 60 to us. Welcome, Pete. Welcome. It's great to have you. Oh, great to be here. Thanks for having me. All right. So thank you for uh, preparing to shed some light on this interesting game to us. Of course, you know, it's mm. steeped in our history and it means a lot to us. So Sky at 60 started yesterday. What was the turnout like and uh, how did the games run? It was great because uh, it was the first time we had the women franchises playing. So, um, we had Guyana, Barbados, and Trinidad women, so um, that was unique and special. Um, and it went really well. So we had a bit of a buzz in the park, which was always nice. And we know when there's a buzz in the park, it's, uh, it's exciting. So yeah, we were really pleased with how it worked. So as you say, it's funny how the game's evolved. I mean, no doubt we'll get down to one ball, be one ball at some <laughs> point. But, but for us, it was, it was natural to, to look at it's like a T10, really, so it's 60 balls. Um, and it's just a very fast and furious um, match. And for the next four days, we'll have four games a day. Um, so it will come thick and fast. Great players, obviously, from around the Caribbean and the world playing. So it's going to be exciting. Can't wait to go to one of those matches. So let's have a look at how Chris Gale, the universe boss himself, as he, as he describes it. Or the 60. The 60, a brand new format that brings cricket fans closer to the hatch. Six wickets per team and 60 balls per innings. You're against the club. Bowl too slowly and you lose a field. There will be 30 balls from one hand, then 30 from the other. Hit two sixes in the first 12 balls, you will unlock a third power play 
over. Think your team need extra runs? No problem. Fans can vote for when a mystery ball will happen. The games will be played back to back with six men's team and three women team fighting it out. It's powerful, it's fast, it's my type of cricket. The six day cricket's power game. It's hard not to be excited after listening to Chris Gale describe that. <laughs> All right, so why name the trophy after the universe boss? Well, it was one of the things we talked to Chris about, because when you launch something like this, you want to make sure that you launch it with a bang, so you get people's attention. So there's no better way to do that than, obviously, Christopher Henry Gale. So um, when we decided, well, you know, how do we, what's the trophy going to be? Is it just going to be the 60 trophy? Um, and he said, he said, what about the universe boss? And we went... 100%. We have to have that. So very much collaboration with him. Uh, and he's been fantastic in promoting it. And of course, it's perfect for him and his skill set. So it's great that he's going to be playing in it um, and honoring us this year again. So um, I think for fans, you know, there's not many, too many days left to watch him. So I would urge people to go and catch the great man in action. You say not too many days. Do you plan to leave the sport soon? If Chris could play till he's 80, I think he would play till he's 80. Um, but, you know, he's just, he's fit, he's, he's healthy, obviously, and, um, you know, he's just iconic. And, you know, I don't think any bowler in the world still wants to bowl at, at uh, the universe boss because he's so um, destructive. But, um, yeah, this, this is perfect for him because he doesn't have to stay on the field for too long either. All right, so in addition to uh, the universe boss trophy, are there any other prizes? Look, I think... For us, it was all about trying to create that buzz of, around the, the park again. I mean, we've had two years where we haven't really had fans back, and, and that's been, been good in as, as much as we've been able to play the cricket. People have been able to enjoy it through tough times, but you know, we know when Warner Park is full that there's no better place to watch cricket. So um, we're going to be giving $500 away per match, so fans can come, and um, you know, the cameraman will be panning around and... If he, if he thinks he's got a fan with a particular uh, interest, he will select them and uh, so people can come and watch cricket and walk away with 500 US. So it's not a bad way to spend the day. Um, we'll be doing that for every game. So by the end of the tournament, we would have given away 10,000 US. Um, and of course, we have Carib, who are the partners. So they do their usual promotions in the party stand, which this year has a pool. We have a pool in the party stand. So... Um, <laughs> A yeah, pool. A, a pool there. So come along wow. and enjoy that. <laughs> yeah, so it'll be fun. Um, Chris Gill mentioned something about time and the mystery ball. Those are two things that baffle me. Can you explain those for me? So I'll start with the mystery ball, which is is interesting. So there's there's an app. It's the, it's the the sixty chat app that fans can go on, and we randomly choose four balls through an innings, and fans can vote on which ball they want to be the free hit. So, um, so batsman can't be out. It's purely about him scoring team runs. Um, but the whole idea was, was to try and get fans closer to the action. So they're sort of involved in the game. So these things say, well, I voted for that ball. And um, that worked well yesterday. And then the time is, again, we just want to make sure that it's speeded up. You know, again, it's like make sure that actually fans continually being entertained, if you like. So if you don't bowl your ninth over by a certain time, you get a red card. A player is sent off, and it will be the first time in the history of cricket that anyone's been sent off. So uh, I'm quite looking forward to it. <laughs> Did I just hear you correctly? If you don't... Bowl, you get... Bowl. Yeah, wow. it's, it's going to be it's going to be quite <laughs> controversial because you, you, you can do all sorts of things. You can find players, you can dock them runs, but... You know, it's one of the, I think, the great shames about cricket at the minute. So it can get very slow. Okay. Um, so this is just a way to say, well, okay, you know, you'll lose your player if you, you don't bowl quickly enough. So. And you could see them rushing a bit yesterday. No one wants to be the first player to be sent off. Got it, got it, got it. All right, so what happens if teams don't bowl their overs? Well, that's the same thing. Bowl their overs have been there a lot of times. So that's the question that I have for you. That's really interesting. So I imagine that that was done because you wanted the game to be more fast-paced and more engaging for the viewers. Yeah, and, and we'll bowl, I think as you mentioned in, in the intro, you bowl 30 balls from each end, uh, what Chris mentioned. So that just speeds it up again. So rather than every over changing, you know, literally it's back to back to back. So um, yeah, it's just about keeping it 
fast paced and as I said we have four games a day so there's plenty for fans to be entertained between 10 and 7 that would engage me because honestly one of the criticisms that I had well one of, not yeah. criticisms but one of the reasons I didn't really enjoy cricket when I was younger is because it was just such a slow moving game so this definitely would get people like me in on the action well it, it just is it's, it's something's happening every every ball really so you know test matches as you say five days you're sitting there and not a lot happens sometimes. So, yeah, we, we, we're excited by the format. We think these new innovations, hopefully some will work. Not all of them will work, but we thought we'd give it a go. Ooh, well, this talk has been interesting, but you have to stay tuned to hear the rest of the conversation when we return after this short break. <laughs> Most people consume excess salt from processed foods, such as snack foods, processed meats, instant meals, and condiments. Instead, use fresh vegetables, ground provision, fresh meats, and natural herb seasonings, just like our grandparents did, and just like you did with this soup. We are Salt Smart. Children, how can you tell a tsunami coming? Teacher me. Sammy? My mother said, when uncle jump in the pool and the water spoosh out, that's how you tell a tsunami coming. <laughs> settle down, children, settle down. Do you remember our tsunami song? Yes! Mommy, Uncle not here in the other shake. Hush your mouth. Daddy, Uncle not here and this sea gone. Who cares? You don't see all them free fish? Quick, give me the bag. This is how you tell a tsunami I come. Teacher says so. I would have failed in school, you know. Sammy, come, come, let me go. They would have failed in the hole. Let me run, see Sammy. Yo, what up? It's your boy Ann Richie right here at Studio 327. I'm here to give you the promo that you guys need because this, this is something special for Sync. It's I'm telling you, tune in to Good Morning SKN, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. on YouTube, Facebook, and on Moment Channel 4. Also, also, I know I realize nobody else is doing this. Follow the Good Morning SKN Instagram at Good Morning SKN and the Studio 327 Inc. Instagram. Follow us on YouTube and Facebook. This is pretty long, but follow us and yeah. And we're back on Good Morning SKN with CEO of the Hero Caribbean Premier League, the CPL, Pete Russell. So, Pete, my question for you, as I asked you during the break, who came up with the concept for the 60? So, my, my team, effectively. So, we were sort of uh, mulling, um, you know, what's the next thing for CPL? Because mm -hmm. you can evolve, put more teams in. Um, but we sort of felt, actually, a new format would probably suit us better. So, as I said, it's only over four days, and most tournaments in cricket are over sort of a five-week period. Okay. Um, so we're trying to create this four-day, almost carnival festival, if you like, so people can come. And yes, you'll have cricket, but you'll have all these other things that we'll put on for you to be entertained. So, so that was the idea. And obviously, we've done it in conjunction with Cricket West Indies, so mm -hmm. Ricky Skerritt and um, Johnny Grave, who's, who have been very supportive. So collaborative effort. So next year it will move to another island or it's going to always be in St. Kitts? Uh, hopefully it will always be here, but, mm. but we'll have different iterations. So I would say you know, we'll play here, hopefully Barbados, okay. Antigua, and who knows, maybe internationally as well. So okay, nice. we, have, we have high hopes. Good stuff, good stuff. All right, when it comes to uh, the intro that I read, we spoke to cricket being a gentleman's sport. 
Now we're seeing the introduction of women's teams. How important was it to involve women? I just think it was critical. If you look at women's sport across, um, across the world, I think it's, it's obviously so much more um, impactful now than it's ever been. And it's just the empowerment that I, I really enjoy. It's like, because it we had an interesting debate yesterday about should you bring the, the boundaries in for the women? And I said, no, keep them out. Make sure that, you know, why? Why, why would you make it any different? Uh, and they proved us yesterday. Exactly. You know, one of the girls hit a six, 87 meters. You know, it really, I mean, out of the ground. So, you know, I shouldn't be surprised by that because they're professional athletes. But, but you know, they, that's my point is they're all professional athletes. They all take a huge amount of pride in their game. And we're thrilled that we're able to bring it for the first time, to bring franchise cricket women because it gives them you know, again if you like a pathway so they can see okay well if, if I do this well I will get the same rewards as the men and, and that's definitely going to happen. Indeed. So do you still believe or think that there is a larger following towards men cricket than female cricket? Yes but it's if I look at the profile of CPL probably 40% of women now come and watch the games. Now I'm not saying that they all come to watch the cricket but um, you know, it's, what are you saying? But they, but they come for the they come for the line. So, okay, you know, we know okay. that that's uh -huh. but that's an important part of our audience. So, uh, and so it's natural that they will therefore have taken okay. an interest in women's cricket. Nice, nice. Definitely, yes. <laughs> All right. So, uh, tickets were given away. Uh, some free tickets. How many tickets were given to local students, and why? So we gave or were giving away two hundred per day to mm -hmm. um, to kids um, and also uh, kids from college. The idea, again, is because we think this is a format for them. So we want to introduce it to them. Um, but even outside of that, the, the tickets are only five US for the day. So you can go and enjoy them, uh, whether you're a kid or uh, an adult. But you know, we've got face painters there. We've got little food packs for the kids. So there's a lot going on for them. And you know, again, we've created the party stand. So you've got the DJ there all day. Um, and it's, it's, it's a fun vibe, actually. So it, it's, uh, I think as, the, as we get to the weekend and people see more of the games and the excitement, uh, I think we'll get a good turnout. Hmm. I can tell you, my cousin is about 14 years old and he's an avid cricket fan. He plays it and he told me emphatically he wants to play for the West Indies. Oh. So he's going to be there. <laughs> and, that, and again, you know, that's the other thing. Get all these, we're going to have a lot of young kids playing. Because the pinnacle is playing for the West Indies. You know, playing for the franchise is important. But the pinnacle is always playing for the West Indies. Hmm. So last year we know St. Kitts won the CPL. So we won't tell anyone, we promise. Who's your favorite team for this year? Well, I, I, I'm not allowed to say, am I? Because I like all six. Um, oh, they all have a special place in my heart. But it was great seeing St. Kitts win it last year because obviously, A, the governments have always supported so well down here. And so the fans. And, you know, for what I love, it's that sort of David and Glass, St. Kitts beating the bigger. Um, countries is always a good thing because there's so much pride here. So yes. to be able to get one over on Jamaica, Trinidad, and Barbados is always a good thing. I think I found out who his favorite team is. <laughs> no, you did not. I'm not going to lie. No, you did not. Go, go to fair try. All right. So will Sky at 60 conclude uh, in St. Kitts and Nevis? And where does CPL continue uh, once it leaves the Federation? So we get a. Um, so we've got the seven games here for CPL. They start uh, a week on Wednesday, uh, and then we go to St. Lucia, and then we go down to Trinidad, and then we go to Guyana for the finals, which will be the first time we've been in Guyana for the finals. And mm -hmm. we've sold every single ticket in Guyana. Of course, I mean, it is right extraordinary. So I just think that will be a, a fantastic experience for not just us, but fans and, and the cricketers, actually. I think they'll really enjoy it. Yeah, well, I'm from Ghana, so I know Guyanese love cricket. Is it at the Providence Stadium as well? It is, yeah. So, <laughs> so it will be, and Providence, when that place is full, it, it, it rocks. So. It is, yeah. So, yeah, that will be exciting. Oh, man. <laughs> I want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> You can go, you know, you can join the entourage. Uh, so, Pete, uh, you were there at the beginning of Hero CPL, and in your opinion, has it advanced, and where do you see it going in the future? Well, this is our 10th anniversary, so oh, for it to be going for 10 years is pretty remarkable, actually, because it's, you know, it, it, it had a, um, it's always difficult to bring something new to, to a sport and to a region in, in, in the way that we did, because you just don't know, because obviously 
you know, the cost of putting something like this tournament on is, is significant. So you need commercial partners to buy in, um, which we're very thankful for them. I mean, you mentioned Hero. They've been with us for, for eight years. So, um, so we're very fortunate in that respect. <clears throat> but you, you have to keep evolving. And for us, it's about making sure we're relevant. We're relevant to cricket in the region. Fans, and as we mentioned before, that governments want to support us because we're giving something back. Yeah. Um, and that's a big part of what we try to do in terms of economic impact. So, but yeah, we're very proud that we're here on our 10th birthday. We're happy to have you too, and congratulations. Indeed. Aww. Well, we want to thank you for taking the time. This conversation has been very engaging. Thank you for shedding the light uh, on cricket for those of us who don't really know much about it, but also creating buzz, because that's exactly what we're about right now. So thank you, yeah. Pete. It's been our pleasure. More Good Morning SKN in a moment, everyone. Stay tuned. Has anyone ever touched you here, here, or here? Well, these are actually bad touches, not good ones. And so if anyone ever touches you in these areas or anywhere else that makes you uncomfortable, you must say no, then go and tell. Say it with me. Say no, then go and tell. This message was brought to you by the Department of Gender Affairs in collaboration with Probation and Child Protection Services, the Ministry of Health, and the Pan-American Health Organization. If you gradually use less salt, you will gradually want less salt. Eating less salty food will reduce your cravings for salty food. Let's get salt smacked. When growing your savings, where you save matters more than you think. Dare to compare and see for yourself why you should start saving and investing at First Federal Credit Union. You don't have to settle for cents. Let your money make sense. Reap a higher return by stashing your cash in a high-yield savings account or term deposit and earn up to 4% interest on your money. At First Federal, we say yes. This is lyrical. I just want to say blessings to you. There are the happy place in the life if you live in there. A happy place in the life if you live in there. But they matter a happy place in the life. And they can't change. And they just come out here to do right. So whether they are night, they will live forever. Change. Blessings, blessings, and blessings. Matthew. mentioned before that socialization is a big part of our lives as human beings but did you know that there are some unspoken rules that that apply when socializing they fit into what is known as social etiquette and that's exactly what we're going to talk about today let's see if Jamie and I agree or disagree dun 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 golf 
for First you. question, what do I know about social etiquette? <laughs> you think Lancy. I know anything? Yeah. Really? Plenty. Really. Jamie, really. you've wow. always been an upstanding really. No, no pressure at all. <laughs> I honestly feel like this is, you know those tests that you get that you know you're going to fail? Yeah. He's never like going to fail. Not Jamie. Mm -mm. No. All right, so the unspoken rule, unspoken social rule, never comment on someone's weight. Yes. Well, let's see. If you live anywhere else but in the Caribbean, I would say it's an unspoken rule. Mm -hmm. Here, however, it it's is a, spoken a rule. greeting. Forget the yes. hi, hello, nice to see you. Will you put all weight? No. That is what we do. And it is like a You're being nice. Greeting. You get fat there? Jamie's being nice. Exactly. You are being your social etiquette mode. And guess what? I'm being in my social etiquette. Yes. If you know what my response ought to be. Because <laughs> honestly, I go through it mentally and I go, mm. Mm -hmm. the things I would love to say to but, you, but for the fact that I would be held to a different standard. So you can get away with that. Because unfortunately, you perhaps do not know about the unspoken rule of social exactly. etiquette. Which is that you ought not to comment mm -hmm. on someone's weight. I'm glad that's the first thing, though. Because just the other day, I put up a WhatsApp status that said, when you see me, if you can, just say, hi, how are you? Don't say anything else. Don't tell me that I am fat or whatever, because I'm not fat. I'm 40. I can't look the way that I looked when I was 16. So, come on, be lenient with me. That's going to be something that you ought to coin, by the way. I'm not fat, I'm 40. Uh, seriously, <laughs> can you imagine saying that on t-shirts, guys? Can you see it? Seriously. Exactly. Hashtag. Exactly. <laughs> no, but I think this is something that we do, and it's just terrible. Yes, exactly. So the next unspoken social rule, don't lend out what you borrowed indeed. If it is not yours, don't act as if it is. That makes plenty of sense. Really? Yes, because I, I loan you something and then you lend it to Lem and then Lem lends it to somebody else and then it never gets back to me. Yeah, it never gets back to you. So yeah. here, here's the thing, I guess when you lend something, be prepared to let it go. That's how it operates generally, oh correct? Oh my God, that's because Jamie's Caribbean unspoken word. It is, because you lend things of value to you, hoping that you're going to get them back. Here's the thing. They when you lend, back. don't lend something of value. And appreciate that lend is another term for oh never see it again. Yeah, because that's what happens. Because if you lose it, then imagine how you feel, right? No, I always try to give back what's not mine or what I would have borrowed. Oh, really? Because it's not mine, exactly. And I try to... Put myself in the person's shoes to understand how they would feel if... Yeah. Exactly. Do you realize how much thought you've devoted to that when other people just don't care? Oh, <laughs> That's why we never get things back for you. It's just how it is. Oh, man. Not fair. Not, not fair at all. So don't greet me that you're fat and bring back I think, my stuff. I think we're scarring our viewers right now because some of them are going through emotional, emotional turmoil <laughs> over, yeah, there's this thing I never got back. <laughs> I know. I miss it. I wish I could get it back. I, you know what? Maybe we even jerked a few of their memories to remember that something's missing from their collection. How about that? Yeah, and that's so a sad they... thing. Guys, we apologize. <laughs> but for the next Unspoken Social World, we apologize in advance. And here it is. If you borrow someone's car, fill up the tank before you return it. Just like how you have to fill up the tank when you return it to the rental. It's the same procedure. Okay, well, yes. yeah, my, my uncle's got this rule down pat because he generally <laughs> does it. And when he does it, and I, I didn't even know it was a thing because I wouldn't be bothered if he brought it back uh -huh. really MC? with an empty tank either. It's my uncle, you know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, he does it. And he's like, when he doesn't get to do it, he apologizes. Oh, I didn't get to, you know, fill it up or whatever. But if it wasn't your uncle, you're giving your family a free pass. But if, what if it was Cortense that... Wired it and brought it back empty. Here's the thing. I never lend my vehicles to anybody but family. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that, so Jamie so will never was. encounter this problem. He will never exactly. encounter this problem. Exactly. Okay. Fair enough. If you are not family, you are not driving. No. Oh, okay. Thousands of dollars that you could literally destroy. <laughs> in a second. In a glance. Absolutely <laughs> not. I'm not trusting you. No way. Indeed. Indeed. Uh-uh. Wow, so our next unspoken rule, when someone treats you to lunch or dinner, don't buy the most expensive dish on the menu. Yes, yes. So if Are you, you having go to KFC, any of those memories? just buy two wings and a biscuit. Are you having any of those memories? Because <laughs> I'm literally like that. I, you know, if somebody offers me something, I'll uh -huh. be like, okay, can I get, you know. And I look for something really simple. Yeah. And I just go, okay, I'll take that. Or a cup of tea would be fine yeah. or whatever. And, you know, Even if they insist, I'll be like, no, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm all right. I'm going to take this. You are, you are correct. I'm going to take that. I've always had this thing. I mean, my Aunt Helen, she's back on the island now. And I remember my mom telling me, um, 
that when I went to her and her husband's house before, I was probably about like six or seven, mm -hmm. uh, his name was Hodge. Uh, he would offer me something to drink. And I'll just be there like, no, I'm fine. Jamie, are you hungry? No, I'm fine. And as soon as I get back to my house, mom, I'm hungry. <laughs> and he's walking <laughs> me back there. <laughs> he's like, Jamie, I just asked you, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just, I guess it's just part of my journey. I'm yeah, just like, exactly. you know, never really. You don't need anything. Yeah, I don't feel as though I would be as comfortable in someone else's house, could be family, it's fine. Mm -hmm. My grandmother, yeah, I grew up there and so on. But I'll still be comfortable, but I wouldn't mm -hmm. treat it like it's my house, if you exactly. know what I mean, I wouldn't get that comfortable. So that's just me. Yeah, indeed. I guess our parents brought us up with good social etiquette. Now we see that. Well, that remains to be seen. We have those left, the <laughs> <with> rules left. <laughs> okay. So be nice and Kind to waiters, yes, cleaners, or anyone offering you a service, and treat them with the same respect you give a manager or CEO. Indeed, I hate to see people talk down to the waiters or the waitresses because if they're not there, who's going to do the job? Like, be kind. Even if they forget something, do you know how much is going on in their mind? Can we add one? Security guards. You know those people at the entrances that uh -huh. you'd hope to defend you yeah, when? Say hi. And if there is yeah. an emergency. The people that you pass as if they don't mm -hmm. exist. Yeah, I'm talking to you people. Yeah. Who do that? Stop it. Not me. <laughs> Jamie, you sound like a parent. Stop I know, it. right? I don't like it. Honestly, yeah. I've, I've witnessed it. I've witnessed such condescension. Yeah. I, I really do not like it. It's yeah. not proper. Yeah. I hate it. Even on a regular basis, we go through stuff where people pass us, like, they just figure, yeah. like, okay, that person is nobody. Oh, this so, is a big yeah. one. So if someone shows you a photo on their phone, don't swipe left or right. They're just showing you that one photo, not all of the photos. In other words, mind your business. Drink some water. In other words, <laughs> mind your business. You get it. Don't mind what I didn't ask you to mind. Mind your business. Or what I didn't show you. You know what happened one time? And I, this is, I got to say this. Out loud. Mm -hmm. This is coming back to me. Someone asked uh, my mom and myself, you know, to see a title we had, right? Mm -hmm. They want to see what the area's like and so on. Brought it out, said, sure, you know, show them. You know what the person did? Took a picture? No, they didn't take a picture. They flipped it. And unknown to them, my mom was very much aware of why they flipped it, because they wanted to know if there were any encumbrances on the title, because that's what my mom does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they didn't realize that's what my mom does. So they asked to see the title to find out, you know, what's the area like and so on. Mm -hmm. But they really wanted to know, do you owe anybody for it? Mm. Yeah, that's the same thing as swiping left, mm. turning over and all that stuff. Yes. Yeah. And you know what? We were so good at it. We just looked at each other. We didn't say a thing because really I wanted to go, I know exactly why you did that. Mm -hmm. And that's the thought that I had in my head. Mm -hmm. It didn't come out of my mouth. And I was just sitting there <laughs> like a good choir boy, like I like to be. But guess what? No, nobody pulls a wool over on me that easy. Mm. We saw it. Not nice. Don't do it. Don't do it. Mm. Ooh, so don't make plans in front of those you are not willing to invite. So if you're having a party, you cannot make plans in front of me because you don't intend to invite me, okay? Why? If I don't like you, I want you to know that you're not invited. That's what we do as So why am I even in your circle? <laughs> no, you're not in my circle. Maybe I work with you. And, you know, we're, we're inviting four out of five people. You're the fifth one that's going to be out. But I just want you to know that you're not invited. So we'll have that conversation. You know... We do that. Jamie sounds awesome. like a mean kid in school. I'm not a mean kid. I'm privy I'm to just certain saying. things. And I know exactly what people do because they think that it's permissible and they don't realize what they're showing you is that they don't know what the rules of social etiquette are. But if they're, if you're saying, you win. You're for the win. No, but you got it. I mean, imagine you've got you know people that you don't like, that you have to associate with. And it's mm -hmm. just like, yeah, you've been left out of this, but we're going to discuss it and you're going to... Because it's designed for you to so feel you're like you're it in left their out. faces. Precisely. Oh, come on. You want to tell me that I, I'm pretty sure our viewers know exactly what, I'm, what I mean because some of you do it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm calling you up. And some of you have been on the receiving end of it. Uh -huh. And these are the things that are done that people generally do when they say, you know, what, there's no right or wrong to it. I can get away with it. And so they keep doing it like they're poking the beer, so to speak. But it's a social yeah. well, of Vatican, oh, right? Man. And right away, if you knew my grandfather, uh, you would understand. I mean, this is a man that I couldn't eat and drink in the presence of at the same time because my hand would get smacked. And anybody who remembers him would know how proper he was. <laughs> so, you know, my aunts and uncles and so on, they're raised with that kind of thing, yeah. and so it kind of trickled down. But, yeah, when people do that, I'm just thinking, 
you're probably not raised really correctly. So it's, I give you a pass mm -hmm. for you. It's a different standard for me. Yes. And they don't even know it. And it's bad to say Cortensia, mm -hmm. but I actually cast mental judgment. It's like, oh, yeah, oh, you do that God. because. <laughs> Fine. I understand. I pity you. It's, it's, it's now, okay. everybody that sees this one, is he casting <laughs> mental judgment on me now? Gee. <laughs> ah, you can go back and remind to our interactions, aren't you? All right, do that. All right. Is this? Okay, I'll take this one. Uh, don't call someone more than twice continuously unless it is an emergency. Gee, I wonder why. You're giving them time to uh, get back? What do you use? You want to take this one? I would say if it's not an emergency, because you calling them so often, they might think it is and rush and maybe uh -huh. hurt themselves or something else can happen. Oh, so okay. just be kind. So if I say Jamie now, mm -hmm. I should have a pause and then say, Jamie, I'm calling you. Okay, yeah. that's nice. Yeah, in an age when everybody Not has Jamie, a cell phone. Jamie, 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 Jamie. No. In an age when everybody sense. has a cell phone and we've got call ID and we can see when we've missed a call, chances are they don't want to call you back. They don't want to answer <laughs> your call. That's just what it is. <laughs> it's like oh, man. Because they can or see. Or maybe our phone doesn't have credit. Pretensy, you've got WhatsApp. Or maybe it died, but the call still goes through. So why are you going to call them? You're still or maybe call where them. I am, it I don't died, have any. But the call still went through? Yes. Okay. And where I am, I don't have any Wi Fi. How about that? Yeah, but if I call you, the obligation is on you to return my call. But I so didn't see it because you... I don't have Wi-Fi. I see the call, but I don't have credit. So, yeah. Okay, so more than twice. Yeah. So, no more than twice. So, you've done it twice. Mm -hmm. Don't do it a third time. Don't do it a fourth time. Uh, unless, of course, maybe um, it's your spouse that you're trying to find. <laughs> Jamie's going to get himself in trouble today. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, your future spouse think, is watching. I, I, think, I think husbands and wives get a free pass. <laughs> this does not apply. <laughs> oh, another unspoken social rule never go to someone's place uninvited or without letting them know you are passing by in advance. And that's so true. Is that what we do here? Sometimes. I think that this is. How do I say this? This, this is something that has been introduced to our culture. Uh, more recently than not, mm -hmm. because that's not how we grew up necessarily. You'd be on the street, somebody would be passing by, and they'd just drop by. Because, you know, people were neighborly then. Mm -hmm. As we begin to get more busy and more pressed for time, mm -hmm. we are, let's put it this way, we're, we're more Americanized in that mm -hmm. way, because, you know, in certain cultures, you can't just show up to someone's house yeah. on time. And so it's similar here. And I actually welcome it, to be honest, because you never know what people have going on. So that makes sense. But really, it's something that I think is maybe over the last 10 to 20 years or so, something that was not you know, present before, really. Because even if someone observed. passed by your house in those days, I find they would stay in their car and have the little chit-chat with you and then continue. They won't just come up the car and proceed up your way. So if, if you want to you know, avoid this, mm -hmm. when you're building your house, always have a front porch. <laughs> So you have porch conversations with your guests below. Oh my gosh. Jamie, you were... Come on, let's think about it this way. Because we talk about people swiping left and swiping right. Mm. Sometimes you don't even invite them to your house. And they just want to see what you've got going on inside. <laughs> so they will show up just because. That is so true. Literally. You heard me, right? So let's yeah. go. Front porch. Mm. All right. So park your shopping cart on the side of the aisle, not in the center. Wow, really? Now you tell me that. I think shopping carts should come with horns. Like, beep, beep. And some people look at you funny when you ask, excuse me, ma'am, sir, can you move your cart? It's like, you ain't seen me doing something? I know. I'm like, all right, Dan. Can you tell people to park themselves on the side as well? Because some of them just don't move. I mean, they see you. Exactly. They just it's don't like, get out of the way. Do yeah. you not understand it's like, Listen. honestly, they see you coming and it's like, well, I'm, you know, it's like I'm doing something. Exactly. So you better wait. I'm going to move it just now. And then to make matters worse, you go, um, good morning, excuse me. And they, they move out of the way. They watch you like. You know what you? I find? Yeah. I go to the supermarkets and the persons that are packing the shelves, I would say good morning or good afternoon. And they seldom ever answer. Oh, yeah? So I don't know if it's because most people don't do it because they don't see them as equals or you just work in a supermarket yeah. that they don't answer me, per se, that is cordial Perhaps. to everyone because we need everyone for the world to go around. Here's what I do. It's all in the inflection. So I wouldn't go, good morning. If I really want to be like, mm -hmm. you know, morning, how are you? You know, inflection. But they still look at you like they're shocked, like you're saying anything to so them. So then say it again. You'd be like, well, I, you know, you, you, can, you get up to two times <laughs> to say. Charm. So you go, yeah, mm -hmm. I say, good morning. 
guess the third right. time is definitely a charm. Uh, except, well, maybe not the third. You're not supposed to call someone more than... Yeah, there we go. <laughs> but my signal's crossed that out. No, but we're not calling them. We're saying calling something Calling out to, to them, Cortense. That's my joke. Oh. <laughs> 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 all right, all right. Oh, here we go. Uh, well, you know this one. Come on, you and I know this one. Yeah, but Wipe persons down the don't exercise do machine after you do it. Yeah, we've even before COVID, that was a thing. Yeah. The, the signs were up in the gyms. You've got those little spray bottles that you're using in the rags. And you're really supposed to do that because you don't want the sweat. Yeah, but this is a universal thing. When I look at um, gym stories all over the world, like on YouTube and mm -hmm. stuff, every, every sign says, re-rack your equipment, wipe down the machines. So it's just a general thing for all human beings. All right, so here's what we're going to tell you right now. Um, in the interest of this, wipe down your devices. We'll be back in a moment. Stay tuned. No cash, no car, no problem. Dad, embrace the freedom. You see that new boy that just joined the school last week? He brought me a chocolate this morning because I showed him the way home from school yesterday. Hmm, you like him? No, he's just my friend. Plus he is my neighbor. He asked me if we can walk home together for lunch tomorrow and I told him yes. I don't like these big boys. They tend to like to touch girls without your consent. What do you mean by consent? It's when one person agrees to give permission to another person to do something. He is cute though. Guys, you won't believe what happened the other day with the new boy from school. What happened? The other day, while walking home with the new guy, he followed me into my house. I thought it was okay because he seemed friendly and respectful. So I turned on the TV and offered him a soda. We sat in the chair together. Then he leaned over and he kissed me. I was so shocked, I sat up straight and asked him why he did that. He said he thought I liked him. I told him not in that way. What? Girl, you should have never allowed him inside your parents' home. My parents will be very angry if they meet any boys in our home plus kissing me. Guys. We don't need to be burdened down with teen pregnancy and relationship problems at this time. Boys need to understand that girls are not sex objects. Remember, you have the right to consent to every activity being performed, from holding hands to anything more, and to change your mind at any time. If your partner does not respect your wishes, this also is a form of abuse. If you, your friend or family member is being abused, you can contact one of the numbers listed below for help. Department of Gender Affairs, 662-5492. Special Victims Unit, 662-7077. Counseling Unit, 465-5000. This message was brought to you by the Department of Gender Affairs in collaboration with the Ministry of Health and the Pan American Health Organization. Where do I always get to say this stuff? <laughs> it's depressing Teacher. that it's back to school season. Well, it depends on who you are. If you're the student, it's depressing. If you're the parent, you're like, hallelujah. All right. So when most of us <laughs> reflect on life, our school years hold a significant part of our memories, from the laughter to the friendships that molded us into who we are currently, to the teachers and the amount of homework they insisted on giving us. And I've never forgotten that. One of the things that pops out, though, is the concept of a teacher's pet. Oh, what is that? A couple of people come to mind. Uh, I'm not naming names. You? No way. <laughs> no way. That's a great way to be bullied. Teacher's pet. So what do you think about this, Cortensia? Teacher's pet. Yeah. Mm, as you said, a great way to be bullied. Um, I was never a teacher pet, so a teacher's pet. So it's, it's not... It's not vibing with me why don't we try this first because we're talking about it but we haven't actually defined it to see if our definitions are the same mm -hmm. what do you think a teacher's pet is a teacher's pet is a student that sucks up to the teacher in every form whether they bring them a snack or an apple every day like we like the states portrays it to us to be a teacher's pet could we afford or, those things wait, every day wait no. or they're 
they're, they never challenge the teacher if they think something isn't the way it is. Um, mm -hmm. They are the best behaved one in the class. Um, they do everything perfectly or uh -huh. in the sight of others to a T. Uh -huh. Yeah. So those, those are some of my descriptions. Yeah, I'll give you this spent. much. I agreed mm -hmm. with you up until you started hitting three and four. Where because if you, if you don't challenge a teacher, that's not necessarily a bad thing. And if you do everything perfectly, that's not necessarily a bad thing either. Mm -hmm. But I do believe that students who do that have gotten a bad rap as being teacher's pets. Yeah. I agree with you on the first point, which mm -hmm. is, you know, those who generally suck up. Because yeah. you can be good, but not necessarily <laughs> See, he got his apple. Up. He's got his apple, but look at his complexion. I'm but look kidding. at his face. Look how <laughs> cute he is. He looks like this perfect little kid. <laughs> Could we afford to buy apples for our teachers? Very few of us, mm -hmm. really. Could have afforded to give our teachers apples and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, if your parents had a farm or whatever, you might actually throw in some cucumbers or maybe something like that. And you take them, right? But no apples. Jamie's going with the veggies. I am going with the veggies yeah. because that's what we, yeah, we, we live yeah. in an agricultural community. So that's what it is, right? I think that, as I said before, mm -hmm. it's not necessarily a bad thing. Those two things that mm -hmm. you hit last, that's the good thing. Mm -hmm. The bad thing is when you know that somebody's doing it just because. So okay. there's not really a genuine feel okay. to it, you okay. know, and it's not who that student is either. But do teachers like to be challenged? Since you were in the field, if I feel that there's something wrong. It depends on the challenge, and okay. it depends on the student. Okay. Because there are students who will challenge a teacher just for the sake of gaining popularity yes, and exerting authority, yes. and not because the challenge is the correct thing to do. Yeah. There are times when teachers do things, yes, there are times when teachers do things, yeah, that, you know, need to be corrected. But again, it's mm -hmm. how you address it, right? Yeah. And there are times when the parents come to the school and they're ready to, you know, yeah. basically beat the teacher yeah. down with words and hands if they yeah, could. If they could, And yeah. it's, yeah, no need. Because, you know, for some parents, mm -hmm. their children are never wrong. Exactly. That's not a good thing because our parents didn't come and tell the teacher. I only know of one parent who would come and do that for their child at the PTA. But majority of us, we didn't even want to hear, I'm going to call your parent to the school. No, why would you want no, to do that? No, we didn't way. even want to hear That's that. That's a bad thing. If somebody is Very parent, bad thing. Mm -hmm. It's a bad thing if they do that. So are there benefits thing. of being a teacher's pet, though? Yeah, you get more attention, I think. Okay. If you need help with your assignment, they'll be more willing to help you because of your attitude towards them. Mm -hmm and towards the overall learning in the classroom. Um, they might even buy you stuff. They might even, if they don't have a kid, they might want to like have you around more than you should be around. They might even want to say, oh, I'm going to lunch later. You want to come with me? So yeah, uh, so yeah, there, there are some that, good benefits. That, that is called crossing a line. I'm, I'm so... It's, it, it sounds and it says that, but some teachers yeah. might go overboard. Especially if they're teachers that don't have kids. They it's, might go overboard and the child is like, say it's a child that is, how should I put it? They don't have it all and the teacher feel like they can do it. Okay. They might go overboard for that child, especially if they're considered a teacher's pet. Okay, well that, that I understand because charity mm -hmm. is one thing. Yes. But crossing a line where you, uh, basically you blur that line between mm -hmm. professionalism and friendship, it, it's mm -hmm. something else entirely. So I was always very mindful of doing that mm -hmm. with my students. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it because of gender though? I don't think it has anything to do with gender because I was the same way with males and females. What it is is that I was mindful that we live in an age where it's very easy to level accusations. Yeah. And um, I did not want those accusations coming okay. my Got way. You. So I was always very mindful Got of you. not crossing the certain line. lines oh, that okay. could be perceived as you know, one thing mm -hmm. when it actually would be something else. Although I could tell you, unfortunately, that I saw some other colleagues of mine crossing those lines and doing yes. those things that I wouldn't do uh, very publicly and very openly, and perhaps mm -hmm. it was a good thing, perhaps it okay. might not have been. But yeah. I was never one to do that. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff. All right, so in terms of the benefits of being a teacher's pet, I agree with you when you say that mm -hmm. it's about the attention, you get the attention. Um, mm -hmm. Well, that's true. And you do form genuine relationships. It doesn't yeah. mean that you have to cross that line, but you can yeah. form those genuine like relationships. Like Miss Frederick well. and us. Well, and, she was and, never my teacher and <laughs> in we, that way. But I mean, my classroom, uh -huh. we didn't have to be teachers, but we just have this genuine bond with Miss Frederick. Mm, okay. Yeah. And I, she never had to buy us anything or take us to lunch or do anything. 
I guess it's just her personality and the exuberance that she exuded to us. We just all gravitated to her. Yeah. Yeah. I would say I'm friends with my teachers now. <laughs> what? Teachers pet. Yes, yes another math test. test. I've had students like that, and I, I love those uh. students. My, certain faces come to mind. They were so uh. eager. And they were not teacher's pets, by the way. They were just good at what they <laughs> I was did. waiting for yeah, that. They were not. They were I was not. actually waiting for that. No, they were not. They were mm -hmm. not. No, I, yeah, it, it's a whole lot of things, right? So, mm -hmm. should a person strive to be close to your teachers? Yeah. That's a funny question. Should you? Yes. Really? I think so. Not to be a teacher's pet, but to ensure that you're getting the best out of that teacher's, especially if you, you don't understand what was, what was being taught in the whole in the class with mm -hmm. everyone right mm -hmm. so you being an obedient person you know somebody that's approachable that your teacher will feel comfortable coming to them to ask a question so yeah it's good to be close to your teachers it's it's a mixed bag for me and a lot of things oh. are it seems <laughs> uh, but it, it's a mixed bag for me in the sense that uh you know when we're talking about teachers here in our context everybody's familiar because it's a small community mm -hmm. when we talk about uh you know universities in larger places and so on where there are more students, there are times when I've had, and it's not an mm -hmm. expectation at all, for a teacher to know, or a lecturer to know my name. It's, it's like very real. Mm -hmm. I had one uh, lecturer who's a friend of mine, uh, Dr. Jason Haynes, and he was very good at learning in the first nice. two weeks roughly 170 something names. I mean, he would literally look through the lecture hall and be like, Hortensia, this and that, and you're like, how do you know that, right? Mm -hmm. And another one, Dr. Matthews. But for the most part, nobody knew my name because I never went to tutorials with them. We were in the lectures. But the smaller groupings, mm -hmm. I hardly ever had a lecture as my Not tutor. Really, really. So they'd look at me, they'll say hi, but they'll never know my name. Mm. And I was fine with that. So okay. I wasn't necessarily close to mm. my teachers. I just did what I needed to do. Now, if I had a question, yeah, I'd ask them. But yeah. but they always say people respond to you better when um, you know their names. And that's what I strive yeah. to do. To do all of the time. Yeah. And, and the when the teacher forgets to give you homework and the teacher's pet reminds the teacher, <laughs> that is the face of whom? The student or the teacher? <laughs> the other students. I would say the other students. And it could be the teacher too. Because what if the teacher's like, man, I'm just trying to wind down the week. Why are you reminding me of this? Like I had enough for the week. So it could be from both ends. Precisely. What if the teacher Because that looks forgets? like the teacher. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But that's not what our like. Are you really? No, no, no. You, no, this is not a Caribbean person looking like that. Because if you want to see the students who are going to look at the Cortense, you know it. They're not just going to look, they're going to say. They're going to be like, boy, you know, and the hands are going to follow it. And the whole class is going to be, yeah. Because What's wrong nobody with likes you, homework. child? What's wrong with you? There's something wrong with that concept of homework. I, I never liked it, to be honest with you. Work at home. No, I never liked it. Mm. I actually thought, and this was just me, uh, mm. I thought that extra it could practice. be used, not extra practice in a lot of instances. It's a way to justify your completing the curriculum. And I never liked it because it put yeah. pressure on the students to do stuff that sometimes were never, was never taught. Yeah. And it depends on how it's used. So generally, I would not give homework. You're, and that's just me. I don't like homework. What? And if I do, it's not going to be a lot. It's going to be like one or two questions. So how did you manage to get through your, your syllabus without giving the homework to complete it? Planning. Oh, Engagement in the look classroom. At this teacher. Delegation. Mm. And interaction. So I it guess everybody liked your classes then. I don't know. Jury's still out on that. <laughs> don't vote. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. <laughs> Please do. All right, well, do. that's a wrap for mm -hmm. us uh, reminiscing about uh, school days and yeah. teachers and the teacher's pets. Yeah. If you are, just be wary of the classmates because yes, there might be some alligators <laughs> in the classroom. Willow, ready to snap. We're oh, I love that. <laughs> ready to snap. Well, okay, we'll take a break. We'll be back in a moment. Stay tuned.
is an important part of the human diet, but most of us consume more than we realize. No cash, no card, no problem. Dad, embrace the freedom. Children, how can you tell a tsunami coming? Teacher me. Sammy? My mother said when uncle jump in the pool and the water spoosh out, that's how you tell a tsunami coming. <laughs> settle down, children, settle down. Do you remember our tsunami song? Yes. Any other shake? Hush your mouth. Daddy, Uncle not here and this is gone. Who cares? You know, see all them free fish? Quick, give me the bag. This is how you tell a tsunami I come. Teacher says so. I would have failed in school, you know. Sammy, come, come, let me go. They would have failed in the hole. Let me run, see, Sammy. Great news everyone, SKN Moves is turning three. And this year we are going to celebrate bigly by bringing back the seven week challenge. For week one, we will focus on the importance of breastfeeding. In week two, we will participate in the SKN Moves anniversary walk. Week three, Let's watch the In Your Kitchen I Rep My Community competition finals. Week four, a healthy drinking water challenge. During week five, it's all about mindfulness and our mental health. And no, that's not all. In week six, we will learn about self-care and management. The celebrations end in week seven with the Caribbean Wellness Week activities, National Fruit Day and National Sneaker Day. Come participate, celebrate and enjoy. Join SKN Moves and let us move toward a healthier St. Kitts and Nevis. I going out tonight. I got a hot day. He older than me, but I don't care. I like what he telling me. He say I look sweet and ting. What? You want me to go home with him? Nice. Boy, I wonder if I'm ready for this. I notice he ain't got a condom. But I gonna go ahead, see? He might think me ain't like him or trust him. Plus, this is my first time. Nothing gonna happen to me. Lord, how could I let this happen? I ain't ready for no child. Who can support me and my child? My man gone jail and mommy and daddy said they ain't gonna help. I all on my own. How could I be so careless? I wish I could go back to that now. But my education on hold. How could I let this happen? Don't let this happen to you. Contact the Department of Gender Affairs to find out about confidential offices and personnel available to answer questions about your sexuality or pre- or postnatal concerns.
This message was brought to you by Project Viola through the Department of Gender Affairs with support from the Basic Needs Trust Fund and the Caribbean Development Bank. Yo, what up? It's your boy Ann Richie right here at Studio 327. I'm here to give you the promo that you guys need because this, this is something special for Sync. It's I'm telling you, tune in to Good Morning SKN, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. on YouTube, Facebook, and on Moment Channel 4. Also, also, I know I realize nobody else is doing this. Follow the Good Morning SKN Instagram at Good Morning SKN and the Studio 327 Inc. Instagram. Follow us on YouTube and Facebook. This is pretty long, but follow us and yeah. Welcome back to Good Morning SKN. It is that time where we know we don't tell you what's happening, but we are loosening up. And guess what we're doing today? We are making breakfast waffles. So, Jamie, have you ever made waffles before? I'm just curious, you know, how you think this is loosening up when, as I said before, I don't cook. This is conspiracy. Can you Keep feel it? Learning so, this to is cook. not me loosening up. This is me being very Ted's preparing breakfast on live television, by the way. Somebody who doesn't cook. <laughs> All right, so interesting segment of loosening up, right? Learning how to cook. I'm playing around with Cortez. I know, learning right, how to so cook. So no, I've never made breakfast waffles before. So there's absolutely no pressure because mm -hmm. as you can tell, based on these segments, I really don't care if I get it right. <laughs> it's just, it's just that is not always. Jamie, well, today you have to care. But I'm looking at this. So to make these waffles, it's one and a half cups of water. Jamie, if you want, you can do, you can have a head start, you know? You can have a head start, a bowl. Oh, so we're just, oh, we're making it together. That's so sweet. But Jamie, you get to put the ingredients together. One and a half cups of water. I imagine yes, this please. was pre-measured. No, you got to wow. measure. You see, here's the difference, right? When it I have to measure what? Okay, this is a cup. Yes. Thank you for that. Here's what, here's what happens, right? Because I know that I need to be so precise with things, I would literally pre-measure everything. No! <laughs> and have it here. That's one cup. That wasn't one cup. That yes, was, it was filled all the way up. This is one cup. Yeah, Great but time. you didn't fill the cup all the way up. Okay, nice. So I'll estimate as a math no, teacher. No, no, no. You can't estimate anymore. You have to go do the half. You want me to go do the half? Ensure that the half cup is filled all the way up. We do wow. not want stiff waffles. Guys, what did I tell you? That's a third cup. You got, you know what? When you're good at cooking, you can measure by yourself. You can get, gauge this. Am I right? Can't you yes, gauge? Yes, exactly. We gauge. Yeah, so Us I cooks. have gauged. No, I'm... but you said you can't cook, so how can you gauge? Because it's math potency. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. You have to be a cook to gauge, okay? Really? Maths don't work when you're cooking. That's not true. <laughs> That is so not true. You measure and you wait. All right, what else do we so have So now do? we two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar. I think that's that cup just next to the I sugar. I need to give you this so you, you look like you're, you know, you're missing no, your bangles. Because I, I, I don't know. I have to read these things. So it's, it's a half a oh, tablespoon. Like two teaspoons. Uh-huh. So you got your teaspoons. Guys, help me so the TSP is actually a teaspoon and not a tablespoon? Yeah. That's what it is? Yeah. Teaspoon. Okay, so this is a quarter. This is a half. Cooking can be stressful. Maybe I'll spill it. This is why we <laughs> so order. So this right? one, this one. This is one teaspoons. Yes, yeah, so two of those. All apple cider vinegar. Vinegar. Yes, two of those right there. Wow. It's clearly labeled for for us, so we don't mix it up. Okay. No, that's that's how you do it. 
I'm so proud of you. I would literally just look at the ingredients and be like, <laughs> "Estimate. This is what this looks like in the pan. No, in the pan. No. And you know what I'll do? I'll add my famous. Bam. <laughs> okay, Emerald. So now we need two cups of all-purpose flour. Wow. Come on, chef. Guys, we gotta is there anybody it else who thinks Kim, that this is jewelry? You gotta wipe it out. <laughs> <laughs> is there anybody else who thinks that this is jewelry? Help me out here. It's like, it's like I'm going through my shades. So two cups of all-purpose flour. Yes, please. Wow. All-purpose flour. This is so great. Two cups of it. Oh, that was step one. Cortencio, we were following the ingredients. I was following you. Look at what step one is. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, where's the, I don't see the milk. Oh my gosh, this is funny. I don't see the milk. Cortencio, do you realize? Guys, anyway, I'm just following Cortencio. Well, I don't see the milk, so let's, let's, let's go. proceed. Pour it in. Put the flour on the plate, Cortencia. The f Great, the flour is on the plate. Okay. It's two cups of all-purpose flour. Guys, this is what happens when you listen to your co-host. <laughs> Can I? <laughs> and we're supposed to sift the flour. You're not sifting the flour, but oh well. So let's go through. It's pre-sifted. Okay, so we're going to add... So we're going <laughs> to... You see, but we still need to follow the ingredients. So one tablespoon... I'm baking pots. <laughs> I'm taking over from Jamie. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Well, well, you've got two plates, you know, so if you really want to sift the flour, Cortezzi, you can go ahead and sift the flour. Man, Jamie. You... <laughs> Jamie. But Jamie, one plate was supposed to be for the cleaned waffles. We've got extra plates, Cortezzi. Plating is not an issue. We've got extra plates. All right. Okay. So, Jamie, you're going to follow the ingredients. Since, since you really ran yourself out of I'm the kitchen. I'm going to follow the ingredients. Yeah, so follow, follow the, the ingredients. I'm going to follow the recipe. <laughs> the ingredients come are on, right Come on, come on, come on, come on. Where's the baking powder now? We're down to the baking powder. So the baking powder. So we're doing wow. one tablespoon. You floured yourself? Okay. Yes, I did. Okay. So that's your dry ingredient. We need a half teaspoon of sea salt. Okay. All right, so here's your sea salt. I'm going to help you. This is so interesting. Oh, it's what a is grinder. This? Ooh, la la. No, 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 you're doing it correctly. You're doing it correctly. You, gotta it like it's open. you gotta take it off, but I don't yeah, know. Yeah, exactly. How do That's the what I thought. It's not open, Cretentia. No, you gotta just turn it over and grind it and we'll see. Cretentia, it's not coming out. No. It's not open. No, because it's a grinder. It's not. Open. Oh, okay, go ahead. Yeah. Ah. In a large bowl now, we're, we're going to sift the flour, baking powder, and we're going to add the salt. So we've got the bowl here. So we'll have... That's a bowl. What? That's a bowl? Yeah. Remember, this bowl has some of the liquid ingredients, which is the water and the vinegar. Okay. Now we're going to do... Oh, I'm doing quarter. I'm using the wrong... It's half a teaspoon of salt. All righty. Like I said, this is how we loosen up here on GMSK and absolutely oh, man. no pressure, right? No pressure. This is hard. For those of you guys who can't cook, 1-800-deliver-food, uh, <laughs> right? Sweet and savory has cooking class. That's <laughs> yes, what it is, right? All right. All right. So have All right. So we're looking for the apple cider uh, vinegar. It's in there already. Not the apple soap. So we need a, te a teaspoon of brown sugar. It's in, it's in the water yeah. already. Great. So now we need the melted coconut. Wow. Melted coconut oil. And we've got, we've got really interesting um, effects happening right now. It's, it's really great. You know, we, we've already started heating up the kitchen. Yes. Okay. Quarter cup of melted coconut oil. So we got our coconut oil. Pretend to say whatever happens, I'm not going to burn the house down, okay? I promise. Please don't. <laughs> Please don't. Yes. And you know what? For all of you guys out there who are not used to doing this sort of thing, just follow me. Step aside and watch. This is a great place to be. You're here for moral support, right? Just watch. <laughs> I can't so believe it. So pretend to say what else are we doing? We need the vanilla extract. It, it, it's like saying that we are pregnant when we are not. 
we, we are, are cooking. It was a when you are it cooking. was a combined <laughs> effort, so we are pregnant together. Guys, she just doesn't mean you and me. <laughs> I keep saying that. I'm always the one who adds that. Oh my god, we are pregnant. Because if it wasn't for me and you, then we couldn't get pregnant. But and she doesn't mean me. Too, right? <laughs> Just, just I was that. waiting for you to come with the disclaimer. If you know how bad I was waiting for you, I was waiting. Oh man. Okay. Yeah, Cortez, okay. there. Great measurement. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. No pressure. All right. What are you doing? Walk me through it. Okay. Where so we we, we have everything else except the fruit. So now we're gonna put all of this in there and mix it up. Really? Yeah. Voila. So you're telling me effectively I could have just added everything to the bowl from the very beginning. Yes, but that's not how it's done. Okay, go ahead. So we're gonna add. And the fruit is a topping, so you can put all that in the flour in the in the bowl rather. In the bowl, yeah. Yeah, awesome. There's no way you can get this wrong, right? You're just literally scraping flour onto a bowl into a bowl. Oh man, J but Jamie, for some reason I. Anyways, I hope the folks at home. Here's the thing, right? When it comes to cooking, I cook without instructions. But Jamie, you just said you don't cook. So what do you do? You, you're confusing us. I'm not confusing you. Wait, we didn't Am put I? the milk in. Yeah, you're looking for the instructions. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You see what it is? So you cook on a feeling, with emotion. Like, this reminds me of pancakes. Who doesn't know how to make pancakes? Especially from scratch. Can you make pancakes? Who doesn't know how to make pancakes? You asked me if I can make pancakes? Yeah. Who doesn't know Jamie. how to make pancakes? Hmm. So I would have done all this in one bowl, but that's just me. Okay, so we need to pour some milk on here because it looks a bit... Oh, so you're going to get milk now. Yeah. So pour some so milk. So we've got some milk. we got to average the milk, though. <laughs> we've got some milk. Don't pour too much. Did we have the measurement for the milk? No, I don't see a measurement. All right, so I'm going to leave this for you. You can do that. And I am going to... Yeah. What are you going to do? <laughs> You're going to get the grill ready? Uh, well, you know, hey. Mm. Oh, man. How much? Okay, let's do half a cup of milk. Half a cup of milk. Yeah. Does anybody else get stressed out watching us, uh, you know, complete these instructions? <laughs> No, they love to watch us Listen, cook. The next Let's time we do this, I'm literally just going to be like, bam. Bam. No. Bam. <laughs> Jamie, oh. Jamie is not good for cooking. Jamie, imagine if myself and you you were on were contestants on In Your Kitchen. Jamie oh, would have been in trouble. In, your, in the first place, right? Let me bring it back to you as we say uh, locally. Donkey has no place in horse race, right? So, you got to know first of all. Oh my gosh. What your strengths are. Oh, and your strength is not. Mm. All right. This is looking good, man. Cortez, you can cook. Guys, have you ever realized that the way things look and the way they taste might be two separate things? <laughs> <laughs> Russia will not have this, you know. I don't know why my co-hosts okay, always okay, try okay. to mash me up, you know. No, I think that's Do you enough. Need more milk? Okay. No. The milk is fine. It gonna... looks it has a texture. It's not yeah. thick though, that's what it is. It's, it's, it's kind a, of um, Yeah, runny. Is it supposed to be? Yep. But not too runny. I'm gonna though. let you go to that side, you shift. And by the way, Cortense. Well, yeah, we're using the cup again. We're having flowered tablets for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> so great job there. Did you ensure that the grill was sprayed and ready? Is the grill sprayed and ready? Oh, it's supposed to be sprayed. Was it sprayed already? Not too much. It looks like it was sprayed. Okay, yeah. So then let's no. Okay. So, yeah. So it was sprayed. Okay. So I don't want to overspray. That's it. You never you ever want the, to the overspray. Measuring cups? All right. Yes, don't please. overspray. Don't overspray. Measuring cups. Pretensely, you want these uh yeah, the bangles. The bangles. I, as I said. So, so, Jamie, come on. You get the privilege of pouring one, so you can do. You can wow, pour. I feel so special, guys. Come. I'll let you go first. I feel so special. I did all the mixing and everything else, so I'll let forget, you do the rest. Forget virgin olive oil. It's virgin pouring. <laughs> <laughs> Dip and pour. 
Remember, don't oh. pour too much. So one side is yours, one side wow. is mine. Wow. Okay, let me take. Let me take the inside because. Okay, go be ahead. Easier. Yeah, please do. Wow, guys, this is this is incredible. You know, I mean, it's it's just amazing. It's it's lovely to see these things get poured. Wow, it's it's just so fulfilling. Cortensia, here, take it. I want you to experience the joy. Wait. Of pouring. <laughs> Oh my God. I want you to experience the joy of pouring. Oh my God, Jamie. All right, so we would have poured. We're going to close. And we're going to cook. I love how we got all fancy with the waffle makers. Yeah. For those of you who don't have waffle makers, here's what we do. You we buy use one. a frying pan and we flip. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how long do we have make to make version of pancake. Okay, so that's it. We are out of time. So we'll show them when we when we get back. Yeah. yeah. All right. Mm. Stay tuned. Hi. If you are a smoker, please pay attention to this message. According to the World Health Organization, there are 1.3 billion smokers in the world today, and tobacco kills one out of every two smokers. Did you know that there is enough nicotine in five cigarettes to kill an average adult if ingested whole? There are more than 7,000 chemicals in tobacco smoke, of which more than 250 are known to be harmful, more than 69 are known to cause cancer, and 16 are classified as group 1 carcinogens. Smoking kills. Are you ignoring that warning every time you smoke? Please stop. Smoking can lead to severe health complications and even death. It affects almost every organ in the body especially the lungs and heart. It raises blood pressure, increases blood clots, and increases the risk of stroke, heart attack, and cancer. It is hard to quit smoking, but it is not impossible. Don't let tobacco destroy you. Remember the four Ds to curb your tobacco cravings. One, delay. Set a time limit before you decide to smoke. Two, drink water. Go get a drink before you do anything else. Three, do something else. Have a goodie bag handy of other things to do. And four, deep breathing. Take at least 10 deep breaths every time you think about smoking. Quit smoking and live a longer and happier life. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Health, St. Kitts and Nevis. Did you know that there are certain seasonings that contain more salt than you actually need? There are more natural, healthier ways to reduce the salt intake in your dishes by using natural things like onions, garlic, seasoned peppers, and even thyme and merengue powder. It's been six months now and Glenn hasn't been working. His attitude has completely changed and he's been leaving the house every day for hours and liming with his friends and coming home drunk and causing confusion. Gloria, Gloria, this is what you cooked today? This is not enough food for a big man like me. But Glenn, it's been six months now. You haven't given me any money to shop for food. Okay, so what you want me to do if my boss ain't called me out for work as yet? Look for a different job now. What you just said to me? Get a next job. What? Help, help, let me go, let me let go. go what? Yeah, let's see let me go. Let me go. Let go what? Watch him out with me now. Please, mom and dad fight. When are they going to stop? 
domestic violence is not just physical, it's mental, emotional, economical, and psychological. If you, your friend or family member is being abused, you can contact one of the numbers listed below for help. Department of Gender Affairs, 662-5492. Special Victims Unit, 662-7077. Counseling Unit, 465-5000. This message was brought to you by the Department of Gender Affairs in collaboration with the Ministry of Health and the Pan-American Health Organization. Welcome back to Good Morning SKM. Burgers, who doesn't love them? I mean, they are such a classic menu item. They're relatively easy to make, well, until you give them to me to make, a uh, rich in flavor and can be dressed up however mm. we want. Almost sounds like a doll, right? I know. So with all of that said, uh, today we will be testing just how much we know about this comfort food by playing a fun game of burger fact or fiction. fiction. Faction? Yeah, fact or faction. So it's fiction. Burger fiction. fact or fiction, Cortensia. Exactly. All right. So play along with us in the comments. And folks, as you notice, I would have been sure that my buzzer is all the way here so that a certain person... When he gets beat, doesn't say that Hortensia cheats. You ensured that because I asked you to put it on that side because they were right here and I didn't want my hand getting Not slapped true. again like it did yesterday. So many times. By the way, I need those points deducted. We're going to share those points for everyone sharing that you hit my buzzer on or my hand. At one point you did this and my buzzer went. You hit my hand. My hand went down. Like literally, oh my God. that was so yesterday. I apologize so yesterday. for yesterday, but today you're still gonna get got and get beat at the same time. Wow! Yes, I I'm gonna be like a DM. You're I love the humility God. in your voice. I love it. Great oh, sportsmanship. I you're love right. It. it must be human, but it's not humility. He's gonna get beat. <laughs> <laughs> so, burger fact or fiction? Hamburgers get their name from. Oh, he didn't even fact. what. He didn't even wait for me to read it. So hamburgers get their name from the Hamburg steak, which originated in Germany. Fact. That okay. is a fact. You already got it. I'm not even going to fight you on that. Well, you started fighting before, so hey, it is what it is. But With my words. You started fighting. I didn't cheat today. So, viewers, you see who the cheetah is. Hi, me. Just because you say it doesn't make it true, Cortensia. <laughs> <You're just saying. laughs> That's I got video footage to prove. Uh, the scar healed, by the way, from yesterday <sighs> when you slapped my hand. But um, that means <laughs> the world's <sighs> largest <sighs> burger ever made weighed 2,000 pounds. Fact. Fiction. <laughs> wow. It was more than that. It weighed 3,591 mm. pounds. Okay, take the lead. Who's Where's that same enthusiasm that you started this competition No, no I'm coming back. Your That's voice why I got said, lower. okay, take the lead. No. Because... You're not saying as much. Does anybody else realize the no, shift? No, no, no. Just now y'all going to hear Jamie crying and saying I did everything that I didn't do when I beat him. Mm -hmm. Right now you're not hearing me say a thing, are you? <laughs> Just waiting for the next. What? <laughs> The world's largest burger was made. The world's largest burger ever made was created in 1982. Fiction. You gotta allow me to read the stuff before you, you plow in. See, you're gonna cheat. I should have said fact. That's my year. I should have said fact. And I think it's I my, think it's I think it's his year too. I think it's obvious you should have said fact, Cortensia, <laughs> but the fact is you said fiction. Uh, don't worry, I'm coming for you. Over 15,000 people came to sample the world's largest burger. Fact. Fiction. <laughs> He's cheating. Does anybody see this? Oh, so less, so 10,000, less than 15. Wow, I'm getting the answers right, so I'm cheating. Because... There's something that you're doing to try to proceed. There's something that I'm doing? What is that something? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do just what you did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The first hamburger made from lab grown meat was served in 2017. Fact. Fact. I, I'm done. 
I'm done. Where's that enthusiasm, Hortensia? I'm so done. No, no, no. Your voice just got a little softer. I'm I don't know what happened. I'm so done. Guys, is it a mic adjustment uh, issue? Your, your voice got really low, Hortensia. And I'm gonna claim my crown. You watch it. I'm coming back for you. No. Fiction. Fact. There are a lot of cows and uh, I believe cookies. somebody's working against me today. Mm hmm Because how can the hamburger get its name from Hamburg? But yet it is the birthplace of Texas. Can somebody help you? Exactly. There are planes, you know. <laughs> I don't know if there are people travel. I don't know if we can see. I will not stand for this. I just know what mm -hmm. I know. The first burger ever sold by a fast food restaurant is five cents. <laughs> Fiction. Fact. I give up. I'm just trying to be opposite to Jamie and it's working against me. Where is that enthusiasm? I'm at, what? No. Where is the enthusiasm? I have a point somewhere have? up on that board to be at zero. I have to be a hero. Zero ain't no hero. No. Did anybody else hear her say that she was going to beat me? Uh, I'm just curious. Did you, did you hear that? Because you cheated. You started off buzzing before I even read the questions, and now... That was one question, Cortez. I'm trying we're, to be opposite to you, and we're it's like working against me. We're like seven questions later. Me. We're like seven questions in now. Oh, man. It's working against me. The uh -huh. Hamburger Hall of Fame is located in England. Fiction. Fact. I can't. I'm just going against Jamie and everything. <gasps> Thebomb.com. Who got that one? Me. Who got that one? Literally, it's one, Cortez. <laughs> one point. It doesn't matter. I said. It doesn't I matter. I said zero was not a hero, and I had to get one. Wow. One is a great number for me today. At least I didn't end the game with zero. Number one made me a hero. Okay. Anybody else realize her volume is getting louder? <laughs> uh, the hamburger first appeared in the 18th century. Fact. Fiction. Come on, green. <gasps> I'm coming up and I told you I'm going to catch up to you. I'm coming up. Are you ready? I love your sportsmanship, Cortensia. I mean, really, it's so graceful. I, I love it, really. I you it was human, but there was no humility in it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming up, I'm coming. On oh, no. average, Americans eat a total of nearly 30 million burgers per year. Fact. Fact. <gasps> 50. Oh my gosh, I should have said fiction. Yeah, you should have, but you didn't. Uh, I'm still coming. I'm going to beat you, I'm going to beat you. I'm still coming. You still have time. All right, so worldwide, McDonald's sells 75 burgers per second. Fiction. Fact. I told you I was coming for you. It's McDonald's. Can anybody else see a shift? There is like multiple personality disorder right now. Cortensia the loser is very quiet. Cortensia... The creep up is the danger. Very, very different. I don't know what's going on here. I don't know who I'm going to get. Depends on the, <laughs> the question. The most, the most expensive burger, the most expensive commercial yeah. hamburger sells Facts. for $5,000. Fiction. I'm coming up. You heard it. Okay. <gasps> I'm one away. Dun, dun, dun. Do you see whose personality has changed as well? Guys, I'm beginning he's to think. Getting beat royally. I'm beginning to think that I need some sort of um, <laughs> ear inflated shield or barrier. Because <laughs> I don't know. I'm winning uh, here. You're winning. I'm winning. Oh, you're winning. I'm winning. Okay. Team Quartensa, come on, come on. During World War I, the US government tried to rename hamburgers to freedom sandwiches. Fact. Fact. <gasps> Don't worry, I'm still coming. Liberty sandwich. But liberty is still freedom. Why? Come on. 
somebody is not working with us. Oh, this is so interesting to me because <laughs> we have time for one more question, <laughs> which means that, like you said before, there is absolutely no way that you can beat me. I'm gonna beat you. Even How is that can... possible? Because that's not possible to date Hortensia. You might see my four turn into a six. Is that Cudini? Burger I don't know. King Cudini? released a meat scented cologne. <laughs> Fiction. Fiction. Mm -hmm. And that's fine because so long as I answered like Cortensu, there was no way that she was going to beat me. <laughs> that was my strategy. And she fell right for it because she kept giving her answers. First, and that is how you play the game. She will breathe deep and she will say, viewers, stay tuned. Because after this, Cortensia alone might come back in the morning at scan. That means I'm gonna beat up Jamie. Stay tuned. You ever hear Earthquake call and say, Hello, Miss Lee, yes, it's me, Earthquake. I come in Tuesday around 10. No, sir. Earthquake does arrive unannounced, and when it comes, it shake all sense and sensibility out of we. Remain calm, stay inside, and do the DCH. Drop, cover, hold on. Once the shaking starts, you know it's earthquake. Make a quick move to a safe place. Don't go to the door where are any exit. Stairs might broke up or full of people. Elevator, avoid that because you might get in and poof, power gone, and you're stuck in that box without ear. Take cover under a strong table or a bed or crouch against an inside wall or in a corner and cover your face and your head with your arms. Remember, DCH, drop, cover, hold on. Glass windows and doors, outside walls and doors in an earthquake, bad news. Take away yourself. Most injuries during earthquakes happen when something drops and hit people entering or exiting a building. Last thing, don't want to run outside and ask, you feel it, you feel it? Remain calm, stay indoors until all the shaking stop and do the DCH. Drop, cover, hold on. six months now and Glenn hasn't been working. His attitude has completely changed and he's been leaving the house every day for hours and liming with his friends and coming home drunk and causing confusion. Gloria, Gloria, this is what you cooked today? This is not enough food for a big man like me. But Glenn, it's been six months now. You haven't given me any money to shop for food. Okay. So what you want me to do if my boss ain't call me out for work as yet? Look for a different job now. What you just said to me? Get a next job. What? Help, help, let me go, let me go. Let go what? Yeah, let's see where we at. Let go what? Watch him out with me now. Let me get mom and dad fight. When are they going to stop? Domestic violence is not just physical. It's mental, emotional, economical, and psychological. If you, your friend or family member is being abused, you can contact one of the numbers listed below for help. Department of Gender Affairs, 662-5492. Special Victims Unit, 662-7077. Counseling Unit, 465-5000. This message was brought to you by the Department of Gender Affairs in collaboration with the Ministry of Health and the Pan-American Health Organization. Yes, we are back, both of us, on Good Morning SKN. And no, Cortensia did not beat me either in the game or physically. Uh, but she does owe you an apology because I found her to be lying on live television when she said that she was going to beat me. So, Cortensia, are you ready to concede? Jamie used a strategy that I did not expect, that I'll be set up and ready for the next game. So, 
we're going to be back. So, Team K, don't don't worry with the little mini defeat that we got today. We will get mini Team J. Mini defeat? Mm -hmm. The streak is in my mm -hmm. favor. In any event, yeah. now what we are going to do is to, uh, yeah. We're going to decorate you the waffles our waffles that we, made. that we made. Yes. And we're going to try the waffles that we made. So this is the waffle that we made. Well, yeah. this is the waffle that I made. I'm assuming this is the waffle that I made. I don't know. It's just, but either way, it's a waffle, it's that, a waffle we that we both made. made. Yes. There you go. Because Jamie did throw the water and the apple cider vinegar in. Yeah. Anybody ever see and waffles like this though? You got the holes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like we didn't see, want it to spill. It's like a see-through waffle, right? Yeah, yeah. There you go. So we have our toppings are blueberry, banana, and marshmallows. So I'm gonna add some blueberries in my holes. Ooh. That sounds like cute. a rap song, by the way. Yeah, rapping. Rappity rapping. Nicki Minaj. Then I'm going to do two marshmallows. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go again with the wine. <laughs> I, uh, listen. Jamie for the win. Ooh, mine's cute, though. Thank you. I'm glad that you finally conceded. it. What? Jamie for the win. It's obvious. Thank you so much. Oh, my God. Not like that. All right, that. so I've got some bananas on. I'm putting some waffles in. Mine's cute, though. When I'm done, I'm going to show you. I'm putting some I'm waffles sure. in. What did I just say? I'm putting some. <laughs> Jamie, put them in again. I've got some Jamie, blueberries. Jamie, put them in again. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Do I? I don't even think I want the marshmallows. I, honestly, I, I, I eat this just like how it is. It is it's sweet enough. Oh. Iceling would tell okay. me that. It's sweet Aww, enough. Oh, she would. All right. So what do we have here? You have chocolate syrup. You have strawberry syrup. You have... And you're using all three, Cortez? Yes. Good I'm making Lord. making pretty... Wow. Waffle, that's the Oh whole point. my gosh. Has anybody ever seen sugar cane with legs? That's Cortensia. Are you kidding? Never. So Look sweet. at my waffle. Look at this. How cute is this? Oh man. How cute is this decoration? This is so cute. Very cute. Yes, but it's also very. You people very... should see Jamie's disaster. <laughs> Jamie's disaster. That's what we're going to call it. That's Jamie, what you call wait. it. They need to see your disaster. Oh my god. Look at that. Perfect. No. I'm just gonna taste mine now. Me too. Mmm. This is good. Mine has a tang to it. Mm-hmm. The berries. Mmm. I'll give you that. Your plate looks good, but I could not mix all of those different syrups together. I just I learned that's like... something on Sunday. It's all <laughs> You, you learned something if on If you were in your kitchen presentation. Hey, listen. Come on. Presentation was important on Sunday. You're forgetting that Sunday was about healthy eating. So presentation health. This is about healthy oh, eating Healthy too. body. No, we're not mixing all of those syrups together, Potentia. Mm. Absolutely not. But I didn't put a lot. Okay. That's you. Mm. So we are now going to give you all the info on what's happening in St. Kitts What's happening? What's happening? Why we eat? Number one, there is a casting call. Oh my goodness. And look at who's having that casting call. Studio 327 is calling all eligible persons to sign up for their challenge accepted casting call. Challenge accepted is a game where three participants will be engaged in thrilling challenges on the site of various occupations here in the Federation. The objective is to test how quickly and effectively these participants will adapt to a new environment in the real world. So here are the registration requirements. We're going to need your full name, your contact details, and a one minute video introducing yourself. All right, can we do this now? Great. Uh, I'm Jamie Morris. My contact details you already have, and you've got more than one minute video with me, right? I'm kidding around. All right, so the deadline for submission is the 31st of August. The deadline for submission is the 31st of August. So chat, great stuff. Casting call, guys. Hey, you don't want to miss it, right? No. But here's how I'm going to bust your bubble. Did you notice the age requirement stuff? I said I was joking around. But I don't know. I don't know. Did, did you miss that part? 18 to 35? Well, I just you know wanted what? to get you. That's well, all. 30, according to you, we're still a good 15 years shy of middle age, right? <laughs> Based on what you said yesterday. About We're 10 50. years shy of middle I'm not, age. I'm not that with you. I know what middle age is. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we are going down the middle of 100. So Sugar Mass 51 registration. Registration for Sugar Mass 51 is officially open. 
So registration is open for all vendors, Calypsonians, Jamie, you can try your hand. Soka artists, road match contenders, Ju Juvert and Parade, Juve and Parade troops, pageant contestants, steel bands and service providers. Registration forms are available at the St. Kitts and Nevis National Carnival Committee Secretariat on Keon Street in the EC Daniel building. Jamie's trying to play guitar. So the deadline to get your forms is Friday, September 9th. Or for registration, sorry. The deadline for registration is Friday, September 9th. So go get your forms and register. Come on. We were on a hiatus for two years. Let us make this carnival great again. And you took me back to America. Anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> number three, Caravana Giveaway. Caravana Giveaway. Okay, so win big with Caravana. Enter their back-to-school raffle for a chance to win. So here are the prizes. Two back-to-school cure packages, free three-month plan with Digicel, and Caravana gift cards. So any of those, right? All you need to do is purchase school supplies from the Caravana store for a chance to win. This offer is valid through... August 31st, and that is right around the corner, so mm -hmm. get moving. Three winners will be announced on September 2nd. Mm -hmm. So, is that all? Is that all for today? Did, yeah. did you notice I was eating yes. while you were speaking? No, I didn't. I okay. should have guessed it, but unfortunately, I had work to do. <laughs> but <laughs> I did my part! You. We want to thank you for joining us. You get paid to eat. I see that. Thank you for joining us for another edition of Good Morning SDN. Remember to follow us on our social media platforms, including Facebook and Instagram at Good Morning SKN. Yes, that's a relatively new uh, handle for us, Good Morning SKN. So tag us there. And of course, you can uh, follow us on YouTube at Studio 327 Inc. Like, subscribe, follow, and share. Well, as I enjoyed my waffle, I'm going to remind you. So always leave us a comment and let us know what was your favorite part of today's show. Of course, my favorite part was everything, including the game that Jamie cheated on. Is, is your mouth full? No, it's not. It's oh, empty. just kidding. Just, just. It's, it's so empty. <laughs> Russia will not stand for this. And this is the part where I say, see you tomorrow, Friday, the last working day for us and a few other persons at 8 a.m. And you will start your morning with us right here at Good Morning SKN. Where I promise you tomorrow, Team K, we will beat Jamie on Good Morning SKN. Thanks for watching us today and every day. Have a great day, guys.